tax codes are written that if you own a investment property, you are allowed to 1031 exchange into another property and defer the tax for as long as you keep the train going. Right? Yep. Okay. So that means you gotta go get more tenants and toilets or you're gonna go to a DST, statutory trust, which is essentially an investment pool of approved exchange facilitator that your money goes into assets that you can't really get them out of. And you get a guaranteed yield, right? So the choices are pay the taxes, buy another property, roll into a DST that you can't get your money out of, or the third, fourth option which people are coming up with is owner financing, where you cannot eliminate capital gains, but you can defer them. So good question. I've only had one guy out of a couple of thousand do the owner contract and a 1031 exchange, which doesn't make much sense, but he sells the building for a million bucks and he puts 100K down. We put 100K down. He takes a note for 900, which he defers the capital gains on that. Right? He then takes his 100,000 and he 1031s into another building. Okay? Of which he has to bring on debt and it has to be, has to buy a million dollar building. So you can do it, but it's very complicated and most people wouldn't because the reality is you gotta add 900,000 cash to your 100 grand to buy your million dollar building. Huh? It has to be the same value. Equal or greater. Okay. You can't sell a million dollar building and go buy a hundred thousand dollar building. So essentially what happens, the tax code is you buy your first single family rental house. Then you buy two doors, right? You buy a fourplex, a duplex. Then you buy four units. Then you 1031 into 18 units. Then you 1031 into 54 units. It just keeps getting bigger. If at any point in there you sell and do not 1031, your basis goes down to your first property. You with me there? If you started with 100,000, you ended up at 20 million and you sell it, your basis is 100,000. It ain't the 10 million or 15 million you bought the last building for. No way. Yep. If you break the chain, it goes all the way back to the beginning. Unless. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we can go there, but so in reality, yes, you get to this, you got 20 million in equity, you sell over 20 million with zero down, interest only for 10 years, you would then defer the capital gains for as long as you didn't receive the $20 million. So it's a great question because when you're talking to people, you can't mix 1031 and owner financing. You basically say, if you elect to owner finance, you are locked into paying your capital gains at the time we pay you your principal. So that's why some people want five, seven, 10, 15 years. In reality, they're getting interest on the whole thing. Versus he gets told he has to pay Uncle Sam $7 million. He's gonna net 13 million. He's gotta reinvest 13 million at a rate substantially higher than this rate we're paying on the 20 million to have it equal out. Okay? So all you can defer, do is defer capital gains. You can't eliminate them but it works for a lot of people. So for the $20 million property, as I understood correctly, you'd be paying the taxes on the $1 million, and that's it, if you sell the 20 million after you've gone up the chain. No, he went up the chain, and this, this is the problem, this, this is the challenge of why these properties don't trade, okay? Your grandfather's 78. He's worked hard his whole fucking life, and you're like, Grandpa's fucking rich. He owns this big fucking building, he owns it outright. He's netting 120K a month. He's making 2.4 million, but he can't sell it. Why can't he sell it? He can sell it, but why wouldn't he sell it? It's making, uh, making more money. Huge cash flow, and if he sells it, he's going to have to give up about 40% in taxes. So why would he sell it? The CPA at that point is going to say, don't fucking sell it, set up a trust, give it to your kids, give it to your grandkids, they'll get a stepped up basis at your death. Yeah, can I just a little yeah. side note? So because we come to him and say, hey look, 
I understand your situation here, Grandpa. Um, let me help you out. You know, let's set up an interest-only thing, and you don't have to pay cap gains right now. We defer it. Let's, let's do a 50-year contract. You can say, no, when I die, my kids can just get it and sell it tax-free, right? They can't sell it tax-free, but they inherited it at a stepped-up basis. Yeah. And now we're getting into estate taxes. Here's where we're getting at. As soon as you get over about five million, you're getting into the web of rich, wealthy people that have estate tax attorneys, financial planners, life planners. And so the reality is they don't trade the fucking assets. That's why these are unicorns. They're hard to find because they don't trade. How many 50 unit apartment buildings are for sale in Seattle right now? Not many. Maybe one. In an area of four million people. There might be one or two buildings over 50 units for sale at any one time in Seattle. From Everett to Tacoma. Or Olympia to... Why? There aren't very many and they don't trade. See why? So your sweet spot is really your one to five million dollar asset where you're working directly with an owner. You can relate to them, you can talk to them. They don't have huge gatekeepers of financial advisors and attorneys that are telling them not to sell. And so they trade. And so Jake, that's how you get the guy who bought it for 200,000, we're selling it for three million. He gets excited about deferring the capital gains and increasing his monthly income. Okay. Anything else before nap time? He looks like he needs a nap. You do that after jump rope and you get tired. You're ready for a nap. As I understood, he's paying, he sells it, he's paying taxes, capital gains like 20 million. Yes, yeah. if he sells it. Yeah. So he doesn't sell it. But he just doesn't pay along the chain until he sells it. Tells he sells it, you're deferring your capital gains. Yeah. Here, let me do it in a simple way. No, I got it. Yeah. No, no, I know, but we'll do one more example. Okay? Because this is back to Izzy. And there isn't very many of them right now. And what are they? 1031 buyers. What's a 1031 buyer? Somebody's trying to go from the eight to the six. Okay. So Dennis is 22 and he goes and buys a single family house. He buys it for 100,000, he does a sweat equity, and it makes it worth 250K, right? Now, he can't live there, it doesn't qualify. So he lies and says he rents it to 18 people, okay? Even though he's one of the 18. That would be the Duggars, known as your family, right? What is there, 20 of you total? They said 21? Fuck, I've lost track. You've probably had another fucking brother or sister since you started here. I don't think so. No? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Look at her face. <laughs> and no twins. And no fucking twins. That's... Okay, we're getting off on the Duggar show. I want to get this over. <laughs> yeah, not on the fucking Duggar show. We already seen that. Okay, so he sells it, he lists it and sells it for 250, and he exchanges, right? So he bought it for, he put 20K down, he's got 80 equity, put some money into it, now he's gonna exchange. So he's gonna go buy something for 480, he's gonna fix it up. He bought a duplex, okay? He makes it worth 750,000, and he exchanges into an eight unit, okay? Which he buys for $1 million with 200,000 down, and he fixes that up, he keeps it for three years, he sells that for two million. Okay, now he's into a 12 unit and he builds some more units and he sells that for six million. At any point of those, I mean, when you're going up the ladder and you have, let's say, 500K in equity, you can pull that out tax-free, right? Or as long as you refinance it. With the refinance. Uh -huh. And is that gonna negate the 1031 exchange? Nope. Okay. So good question. You're throwing a curveball in there. You could refinance, pull some capital out, okay? But the difference will be, say you refinanced it at 200, now when you 1031, you only got 50 cash. You sucked all the cash out, now you're gonna go try and buy a 480 building with 50 down. So you can keep sucking the cash out, but that leaves you less to put down. 
But, but okay, let's say you're jumping from like the million to two million, whatever. And let's say you have almost a million in equity from the two million. Right. I mean, it would make sense to just because it's still tax free. All refund, all debt is tax free. Yeah, and so so if you never you if, don't if, need to sell to get the money out, so it's, it's still like you don't need to sell ever. Okay, thank you. You just made my fucking point. None of these buildings trade. Yeah. Which is why if you're going to go fish and you fish apartment buildings, why are there generally lots of interested parties for apartment buildings? How many apartment buildings have you pushed so far? You haven't pushed fucking one. Why? Because we fucking buy them all. <laughs> right? <laughs> See where I'm getting at? So if you're going to go fish... You fish apartment buildings, you get one, we're probably gonna buy it if it's favorable terms. Or somebody else will. Okay? Now the problem will come, Izzy, is let's just say we have a 10 unit, it's two million dollars and it's cash out. Then the person's gonna say, well, I'm a cap rate buyer and I gotta have a cap at 6.0, and right now that's a 5.4 cap building. They probably wouldn't be interested in buying it. So you might have to go get the price down or you'd have to convert it to owner financing to make it favorable. Who buys a $2 million 10 unit? You. Okay, thank you. But who, who in generally buys a $2 million building, apartment building? We just said it 30 seconds ago. Yeah, the 1031 guy. The fucking 1031 guy has got a million bucks to put down. He's going to take 50% loan to value debt and he's going to cash flow day one. Or he's a fucking tech wizard who shows up and he's just throwing his cash around. Or it was China. It's not China anymore. Anybody paying attention to the news? What's happening in China? No. What's happening? Fucking Google it. Isn't it like crashing? Crashing. Collapsing. Collapsing. Starting up kids. Huh? Starting up kids. <laughs> now you have kids? No, I'm saying they don't have enough kids. Oh, they don't have enough kids. Yeah, imagine if a couple of my families moved there, we could fix the economy. <laughs> <laughs> More kids. Okay. Keep reinforcements. Okay, so you, for a long time it was Chinese buyers moving their money to the United States and paying cash. Are they there anymore? No. Okay, so every fucking building you're negotiating on, who's your buyer? No, I, I know, but you, I'm trying to be a parrot so you fucking hear it over and over again. So when you're on the phone thinking, he wants this, he wants, like, who the fuck would buy this? Yeah, it's either 1031 guy with all cash, tech guy, or somewhere we're talking about, or if we can get good terms, then fucking anybody. Then everybody wants it, okay? Hundreds of thousands of phone calls I've had forever in my career, the first or second question out of their mouth is, will the seller carry paper? Price, will the seller carry paper? Price, will the seller carry paper? Price, will the seller... That's all you're gonna hear, Izzy, if you're gonna work sales. You. And you're going to say, if they fucking would do owner financing, we'd be buying it. I wouldn't be talking to you. <laughs> Stop fucking calling me. Wait, how do you know that was my phone call? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, 1031s, we're back to. See, I'm getting you excited because I'm getting you to show the scarcity or what sells. Okay? I'm being funny, but do you know how many buildings like this are left in Seattle? And what is this? This is a commercial office building with surface parking next to an arterial that has development value for seven stories. Think of how many buildings downtown East Lake, Queen Anne, the megalopolis now. There's you, probably a lot. Huh? There's probably a lot. No, there's none left. The opposite. When are you, when are you going to develop this? Um, I don't know. At some point. Right? It only takes seven fucking years in Seattle. Okay. So there are not them, there's not that many buildings left because they've all been torn down. So if you're a business owner that wants a excess, think of it this way. Five story, six story new building with subterranean parking. Looks like a fucking prison on the front with concrete and shit. Couple little glass doors. You have to go down, 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 go through a gate, then walk up to the retail space. Is that something you're really gonna go do? Only if you have to. Versus you're driving along, you can pull in right off the street, you walk in 10 feet over, you're right in the business. Yeah. Subway, Starbucks, 
fast food, mini marts. There's very few of those type of properties left because they've all been torn down and redeveloped. So that's a valuable asset. There are business owners that want those properties. We looked seven years to get this property. So I'm just trying to get you to open your eyes to everything in real estate so that you could go to any zip code in the country and say, I'm going to fish this fucking thing. Jim told me these are favorable sellers and they're buyers for these type of properties and I'm going to go call 122 of these people. I guarantee you I can get five of them to sell. Okay? That's what we do here. Okay, I'm out.